Immaculatus by Calvin Klein. So you're driving along and you hear a voice clear as day in your car say, the moment the engine stops, the car is going to explode. It's like something out of speed, isn't it? What do you do? Well, in my lengthy experience with hearing tormenting devilish evil voices, the only thing you can do is to keep going, stop the engine and hope for the best, and usually, which is why we aren't we know demonic voices are demonic voices, is because they lie. It's that simple. How else do you think human beings know the difference between demonic and divine voices? The demonic ones tell fibs. They lie. They talk shite. They just, they're evil. There's no two words about it. And that's why they're defined as demonic. They come from more of an experienced periphery of the planes. More out there on the limb, more out on the radius field of higher knowledge, right? But on the inner field of higher divine knowledge is the divinity of the more profound radiance of the holiness. And that comes more from selfly within. And tune to that little number and you may just be alright. Because there's no point in freaking out and listening to the demonic voices on the deep periphery of the darkness. right? They just want to see you and all you love die and burn in hell. And there's no way we're prepared to put up with that because we're believers. And we believe in God and we don't believe God wastes his children. So what we do is we ignore the voices of the demonic and the damned. And we press on with our faith, with our love. And it's not a colour based issue. Just because I am beige does not mean I am pro-white or against black or pro-black or against white. Or even involving the chinkies. It's got nothing to do with any of that. It's just about pure realism of psychological flow when you're delivering yourself into a universe of reality and you are a schizophrenic. Negotiate it. You, I'll give you two weeks in my shoes and tell me I'm a fool after 25 years of this. I'm not sure any of you could handle 24 hours, I sometimes think, but don't worry, it's not hell. Hell I only experienced for 10 hours in my whole life so far and I trust never to see again and it was the most horrific horrible evil shocking vile offensive painful terrifying place I've ever known or experienced I tell you the very power of that horrific LSD trip was exactly enough to propel me into becoming a Christian. And I was a smart guy at a good public school. Alright? So it's not an intellectual thing. You know, I used to be very smart. I had lots of friends. And lots of people looked up to me. And I used to lord it up over the study of a nice public school. And I used to rule that school pretty much. Me and my men. And we loved it. We had a lot of laughs. And that was an expensive pu public school. But when I went to hell, boy, I had this, the, the, the carpet swept from under my feet. And I knew then a pain and suffering I never want to revisit, and I never shall. Because I was foolish at the time. I believed that taking some microdot thingy, blue lightning, LSD, red pill bullshit trip thing would be the path to enlightenment, which it was, but that wasn't it. I had to suffer like a motherfucker. And I don't use those terms lightly. It was horrific. Horrific. And I spent years in mental torment because of that one decision in space-time. This is why when the carers and the angels and the lovers of God tell you not to do hard drugs, it's because they're very sensible and they care for you and they mean it. Don't go near.